day, Max here again. Welcome back to the shop. So this is part two of our little um, short run production job that we're doing and the related tooling set up to be able to carry out the, the job in a timely fashion. Uh, before we get into that, I've just been down the uh, local tool supplier. I had to get restock a few taps and reamers and, and whatnot. So you overseas guys will have a, have a good laugh at the prices of what we have to pay for good quality tooling here in Australia. Now, if we swing you around, we'll have a look. So what we have here is a 12mm carbide long series end mill. There's $70 in that. An M12 by 1.75 tap. It's a spiral flute machine tap. $61. The same but in an M10, $46, an M10 gunpoint tap, $40, a 6mm reamer, that was uh, $38, a 10mm reamer, $51, and a 3.8 reamer, $88. Okay, we're just creating our work holding cavity in our soft jaw there. So as we've just seen in the last clip, we've run this 24mm down to a depth of approximately 20mm to create a bit of a pilot hole so we can get our boring bar in and bore it to the 30mm finish size to take the OD of the round 1030 bar. So, We've got a few cuts to go, so we'll crank up. Make sure we're in here. Okay, so we have our pockets cut out of the vise, so it's just a matter of grabbing two at a time of our parts, drop them in, clamp them up, and we'll get the face mill down, and we can go that one, and then that one. Undo the vise, take them out, put the next two in, and away we go again. We've also added a slight undercut at the base there, so when our part drops down, it just drops on this land on the very bottom of the hole, and that, that's on both of them there, so that one as well. Now, we did have one um, comment from the last video. A chap was saying, why didn't I cut a V-groove in? Well, because I'm using the jaw as a depth stop, there's one reason. It's, I can't cut, it's a lot of work, you can do it, it's a lot of work to cut a, a, a V-groove partially way through the depth of the jaw. You've got, a set, you've got multiple setups to do that. And the other thing is to, I don't want to put any marks on the OD of the part, because this is an item that gets sold, so we can't afford to have any jaw marks, clamp marks or anything like that. So that's why I've opted for the semicircle um, clamping arrangement. And so when our parts dra uh, drop in, it's dropped in at the, the correct height and they're protected by the soft jaws and um, nothing can happen to them.
that finish is quite acceptable for what these parts have to do. So you can see how quick it is, far quicker than chucking it up in the lathe and, and doing the cuts in the lathe as I explained in the other video. The time it takes for the lathe to get up to speed and slow down um, takes longer to do that than it does to actually face across in the lathe. We had this cutter running on 1200 RPM then on a feed rate of 150mm a minute. So Anyway, I'll, I'll get the rest of these pushed through and then we'll move on to our next operation with them. So just going through getting the chamfer done on them now. Gets rid of that sharp edge. Okay, well that's all of our parts cut to length, faced, chamfered. So now we move on to the other features. So there's this hole that has to be drilled and tapped in the end here, and we've got two flats to machine on. So I think we'll tackle the flats next, so we'll get set up for that. This is going to be our setup for doing the flats. So we're just going to do, where are, where are we, camera? We'll do one flat first. So we'll take it in two bites, we'll take the lion's share out first and then we'll finish up with, with a, a light cleaning cut as we come up to a zero position on our knee dial. So let's start the mill up and see how she handles it. Okay, finished pass for the first side. Parallel will index the flats. And I'm just going to hand feed these, there's no need to Gives you what I feed for these. take the part out, we don't want to run the cutter back across the part because we're, we're getting a good finish on them so
wipe down and then with the next two I'll just show you something with the operation that we've just done now say I had to do say 50 or 100 of these or something and not the 10 or 12 I'm doing I would actually cut the semicircle down there, bring it back, on both jaws, that way it gives it the part, the cradle to sit in, and I'll do that in two locations, so that's how I would go if we had large quantities of these things to do, and I would still register same way as we did before for a finishing cut. I would still run all the parts through twice, the roughing cut and then run them through with a finishing cut and register with our parallel the same as what we did, what you've just seen. Okay our second operation is to repeat this flat on the other side of the part. So once again because I'm only doing 10 of them we'll use a parallel to register it and we'll set two parts in exactly the same as what we just um, did before. But once again if I was doing say 50 or 100 of these things I'd make a dedicated pocket. Uh, we'll cut out another semicircle. Same as this one on that side of the jaw. That gives a nice round cradle for this area of the part here to sit into. Then on the other jaw I would I'd machine in a flat area. So we'd cut in to the jaw, same again, but we come down and machine that flat. And take that whole piece completely out. That flat land there becomes your registration for here and our semicircle that we cut out on the other end is our registration for there. Now that's if I was doing great quantities of these and if I was I'd use slightly taller material for the jaws that way our cut out here for the previous operation we could have positioned here we would have had room above the cap screws for the jaws and that would have left enough room in the centre here for two cutouts so we could still run two parts at once. Now one thing you have to keep in mind doing this, remember our first operation where we faced all these to length using these dedicated cutouts here, that provides us a very accurate length factor on our part. So when we're clamping multiple parts in our vise it means the they will crush up evenly. I mean, this there is a little bit of play in the vise. There's not much. So as long as you're within a thou, you're not going to have an issue with them clamping up. So we can just set our cutter height now. We measure from the top of the parallel to the uh, insert on the cutter. And we can just do this by eye for an initial trial. So we need a 20 millimeter finished flat. So we'll set our cutter to 21 millimetres. So that'll take uh, four mil off in this cut and leave just under a millimetre for a finished cut. And while the machine is doing these um, secondary flats, it's a good opportunity to take care of this ragged edge on the face there. So the part will clamp up in the vise.
So the benefits of doing the dedicated pockets for each uh, operation on a set of soft jaws, apart from giving it a good secure location and clamping, you're not dicking around with a parallel that's going to move around all the time, which is fine for we're only doing 10 or 12 of these, but like I say, if you're doing 50 or 100, a parallel that's going to move around in there is just going to, it's going to give you the shits. So we'll crank the mill up and keep going. And Pete, there is lead in my pencil and I've sharpened it especially for you. I know these are old pencils, they still have the cutout on the end of them from 25 years ago or so when, when our kids first started school. <laughs> anyway, let's get milling. We'll pop these out and we'll have a look and see how our initial thickness is travelling. And yeah, we're spot on 21 millimetres, so that leaves one millimetre to go for a, a clean up pass at the end to bring it to final size. And the reason I'm not taking it to final size now as we get a pick up a better finish taking a finishing cut because we run our cutter a lot higher RPMs and it seems to work with this 1030 steel so we'll run the rest of them through now and uh, see how we go right that's all our roughing passes completed so we have one more pass to bring us down to final size, which is just over a millimetre. Okay, so coming up 1.15 with our dial on zero, and that's our marker on the knee. One millimetre, 1.1, and uh, now we've got to come 05, so 02, 04, and we went past it, so we go back. Come back up, 1.1, 1 1.102, 1 1.104, 1 and 1.105. So we'll take a trial cut through at that and see how we come up. Now I did put a uh, match mark on there, so I know if these have to go in, they go back in the machine the same way. There's no real tolerance on this size as long as we're close to 20mm. And we're 20.01. Boy. 
20.015 so I'm happy to let, let them um, slip through at that so we can safely push the rest through okay before we move on to the following operations the secondary operations with these parts also pays to have a look what other parts you've got cut for the same job and as it happens we have a whole heap of these blocks that have to be taken down to size which are these blocks here and they've got secondary operations so while we've got the cutter and the setup here we don't have to change anything we just got them sitting on a parallel we've got 10 are required but we're doing 12 so why not run them through the vice and groups of four and dimension them down to size Okay, one other small point to consider, it's quite a valuable point. If you're doing multiples like this and you're getting size differences between your different batches of multiples you put in, you could have like three quarters of a thou difference and you can't understand why. Well, it's the torque, what, well one reason, it's the torque you put on your vise. Each time will change things slightly. Vices will flex. So if you want even, this is the way to go. Do it up. Tension wrench. And that way you'll get an even clamping on your parts. Okay, while we had we're playing around with face mills, we got all our our blocks all machined to size. So we had to take machine off to, uh, two faces get them to dimension. So now we're going to move on back to our original part. So what we're going to tackle now is this cross hold. Now that's uh, 0 0.375, 0 0.376 diameter, but as we're converting this to metric we're going to go 10 mil. so we're going to drill and ream these to 10 mil diameter. So what my plan is, I'm going to sit them in the vise like that but this end here will be in a pocket. So what will happen, our movable jaw will come up here and our fixed jaw will be here and we'll machine a, a, a pocket in it for, the, for this part to sit in. So we're supported under the drill and we'll cut a recess so the drill and the reamer have clearance when they break through and it's supporting, the pocket of the vise will be supporting underneath where we're drilling. We don't want to clamp on this too tight as we have it, going to have it mounted more biased to one end of the vise. That will leave us a, a spare position. I don't know if you can see it here. A spare position roughly in this location here in case we have to do a similar thing because we have holes to drill and ream in this part as well. So. That's the plan, so we'll get set up with a little end mill and we'll cut a pocket out here.
So that gives us clearance for our corners of our part. Our part drops in. So what we'll do now is we'll cut the relief in the centre here for the drill and the reamer. Okay, that's our completed pocket. So our part will clamp between this jaw and this face here. Sideways it will locate on this face here. And here's our clearance area for the drill and the reamer. We pop our part in, part up against the side. Clamp her up. So all we have to do now is to get our hole location. So we'll just edge find off our area down here and come in 15 millimeter, which is half of the 30 millimeter diameter we have here. And then we'll measure back. Uh, I think it's taken off this face here to our hole center. Now you might think why I've left this bit of clearance here. It was on purpose. This makes it just easier to get the part in and out. And I'm pushing up against a hard edge here, a hard stop here for our location.